thank you for joining today. Um, this is Music Supports Tales from the Tour Bus Chat and today we're going to be raising awareness about the highs and lows of being back on the road again. Um, we've got some awesome guests with us here today but before I introduce you guys I'm just going to say a little bit more about Music Support. Um, so Music Support was founded in 2016 by people from the industry, uh, for people working in the industry that are affected by mental ill health and or addiction. We're here for everybody in the industry, so that means whether you're an artist, a manager, a promoter, your crew, behind the scenes, on stage, we're here for everybody. And we're also here for family and friends of those affected as well. So. If you're a grandma, a brother, a friend, and you know someone that's struggling or you're, you're struggling yourself, then we're here for you. So pick up the phone. Um, we offer lots of different services. We've got a helpline, we do um, education, so training, mental health first aid, addiction and recovery. Um, and we are educators and we put out content to kind of promote and end the stigma of mental ill health and addiction. So I think that's everything. Obviously, if you want to know more about Music Support, go to www.musicsupport.org. But um, I'd love it if we could just each go around and introduce ourselves. So basically what you do and um, who you are. So we'll start with Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy Harrison. I am a Managing Director of Pixeled. Uh, we are an events production company, but my main role is I'm a lighting designer. Um, so I get to um, blind everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I get to make these fantastic bands look awesome. <laughs> and we'll go to Loz. What's up? Uh, I'm Loz Taylor. I'm a lead singer or shouter or whatever you can, you can call it for While She Sleeps. Um, yeah, that's me. Cool, then Ralph. Hi, I'm uh, Ralph Reynolds. I am a musician and producer, uh, predominantly working with a band called Enter Chicago. Awesome, okay. And I'm, I'm George um, and I work for Music Support and I work frontline with our beneficiaries. Cool, so I think we've all seen as, as um, we've just talked about that um, there's lots of artists recently who have basically been very public about stopping touring because their mental health is really suffering and it's been really refreshing to see that people have actually gone out and said I, I need to take a break because I, I need to protect my mental health and my well-being so I'm really glad that we're talking about this now um, but just to kick things off and to go back a bit, um, I wanted to ask you during COVID, so when COVID hit and we were all locked down, how did that affect you personally and, and your work? Um, and this is to everybody um, and feel free to, to jump in whenever you, whenever you want to. I'll, I'll start. Um, so it was horrible um, before COVID, um, business was ticking along nice you know we we're all having a fun time and it was great and then covid hit and obviously because it stopped all the events it meant it stopped our work and it stopped our jobs so it was like what are we gonna do <laughs> because i i am not skilled in anything else i don't have anything like this literally I, lights is my thing i, I do lights and that that's it so um we were we took some time out because um, we had to and then the old bank was getting low <laughs> so it was like probably should look at getting another job here um, and my husband George his dad is a project manager at Centre Parks so me and George ended up working at Centre Parks in Nottingham on essentially a building site where we were renovating the Centre Park's lodges <laughs> and it was, I was so grateful for the job but it was absolutely soul destroying. Had a really, really hard time with it going from these amazing events um, to a 
a building site in a forest. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the, the biggest thing. Um, yeah, I was very depressed, very low. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was rubbish. <laughs> Thanks, Lupe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, for uh, you know, for myself and Raoul, we obviously tour a lot. Um, and, you know, Lucy as well. But um, I think I had a weird sort of journey with that whole thing. But because my band has been on the road for so long, when COVID, we were in America at the time and um, we were about to, we've been on American tour for a few weeks. We were about to basically hit like the good part, if you like. <laughs> we were about to hit sort of LA and, and Vegas and stuff like that. And we're quite excited for it, but we had to cut it short. Um, and it just, get, we kept um, kept hearing about COVID getting more and more serious as, as the sort of tour went on. And we started thinking, you know, how's this gonna, how's this gonna play out? We need, and we're thinking about sort of airports closing and stuff. And it was like, you know, we need, we need to be thinking about getting home as soon as this thing gets to that point. So we had to cut the end of our tour short. But then initially after getting home for a little while, because we toured so much over the last 10 years, at first I was kind of like, this could be quite nice, you know? It could be quite nice just to not tour and be home and, and, and chill. But then that quickly, you know, when, when you're used to being on the road so much, that quickly turns into cabin fever. And, and, and like from going from like probably a week's worth of being at home, being like, this could be quite good. And then quite quickly realizing, hang on a minute, this is getting so serious now. I don't know when touring will come back. What's the future hold for the band and our crew and, and things like that. So, and I know so many people like Lucy had that had to sort of completely change what they were doing. Think about, and think about doing something completely different. And that must have brought enough anxiety in, in, in anyone's case you know like um to have to completely switch jobs and I know there's a lot of people out there that were supportive in that thing I know I have a lot of friends that um work in the trade that took on people from the music industry that were helping them sort of oh just come and help me do do roofing and stuff like that things that were still able to happen so it was just it, it was so crazy to you, you never could sort of think that that's going to happen and then for it to just be landed on you and everything sort of turned upside down really quickly it was quite daunting, and and like I say, I, at first I was kind of like, "This will be quite nice," and then quite quickly I was like, "Yeah, I don't don't know how this is going to play out. It might be a uh, might be a long one." This, so yeah, very weird, very unsettling time. Yeah, and I guess it's like the fear of the unknown as well. Like you say, you're you're knackered. You get this lovely break, and then all of a sudden it's like, "Well, are we ever going to be back on tour again?" You know, yeah. what actually is happening with the world? Nobody knows. This is weird, like virus that's here. And nobody knows what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Rao? Yeah, well, I mean, that was... I, I, it's hard to think about that now um, because, like, the world is, like, back to some sort of normality. But, like, yeah, at the time, especially those first few months, it was just like, what the hell is this? Like, what's going on? Um, how, how dramatically is it going to impact us for, like years you know um so there was like real extreme anxiety and it for a while it felt i'd say for that first sort of first 12 months i suppose it just felt like we were witnessing like the death of our own bands essentially we were just like oh yeah. so this is what it's like just to if our band would break up essentially because we're not touring um i couldn't really write music which made it even more difficult um so it was just, yeah, it became like this this empty space of just like confusion and anxiety. Um, we actually were, we released um, our last album, uh, Nothing Is True, like, uh, when, I think it was like two weeks into the first lockdown. So it was like really, really bad timing. Um, we obviously just had to cancel all the promo around that. Um, it, th there were certainly like positives around that because we we sort of, felt a real strong degree of connection to our audience because it was basically down to them to promote our album like we couldn't do anything to to promote it really um so there's like there was immense gratitude i mean there's always gratitude to people that support you but like in a situation like that it was just like wow um but yeah all, all the the physical like validation the physical sense of purpose um, the human connection, having that stripped away um, was just 
yeah re really really difficult um and and really worrying yeah when we had like rishi sunak saying basically oh you're in the arts get another job we <laughs> must have been like every like hardened conservatives dream to be able to say that sentence without getting a much of a kickback um, <laughs> so that yeah that was that was really frustrating and it was just yeah it was constantly thinking about like ways that we can adapt really and and worrying about how long we'll have to adapt for yeah. um but yeah it was it was a difficult one like i remember at the same time as well to to add a real sort of nuance and like levels to the emotions that i was feeling like when we released our album um i i ended up feeling a real sense of guilt that i was like frustrated that the album wasn't able to like you know be spread far and wide and stuff like people were dying all around us like you know not just like old people who were on death's door anyway there was like it was horrible it was everywhere like people we knew and so then i was thinking and here's me getting like angry about an album that isn't like stretching as far and as wide as we wanted so it was like a real mental health cocktail <laughs> um, yeah so it was it was a it was a very strange time and and, and weird to think about now because it seems so far far gone yeah and and i saw that you uh developed a podcast um you started a podcast in 2020 is that right was that because of kind of channeling your your creativity and your emotions and everything into into something else while you weren't i guess in music yeah well it was it, it started off just um i did like live streams just on instagram um basically live guided meditations nice. um like meditation mindfulness particularly um has been like such a great tool that for me personally o over the years um and it felt like as we were all you know there was a, a a big percentage of people just sat at home anyway it was like well let's maybe try and use this time to, to spread some of this um information and experience and, and hopefully it will help a few people um and yeah it was it was it was really good fun um and so then I decided to yeah do a put it all onto a podcast so people could listen to it at their own you know in their own time I, I think that whole world is can be quite difficult to get into especially if you're you know if you're the stereotypical what people think of as the stereotypical alternative person maybe you're like you know you think of yourself as quite metal and tough and like meditation like what what is this you know this this is like this foreign weird concept for like hippies or, or whatever um and it's such an incredible tool so it was i was just trying to like use my uh um what's the word i'm looking for influence um to sort of like try and introduce people to that whole world basically yeah. And it is so important, isn't it? I mean, well-being and, and meditation and mindfulness, it, it really doesn't help. No matter like who you are and what you do, everyone should do it. There's there's a thing that we say at Music Support that you should introduce a happy hour every day in your day. Anything, you know, like going for a walk or just listening to your favourite track, doing something for one hour a day just really helps with your well-being. So you you guys basically you know you were all locked down in covid like we all were so what happens when the doors open again and it's like right everyone it's time to get back on tour what was it like being back on tour post covid were there many changes how, how are you feeling well I'll, I'll go first um we were really lucky actually in the way that everything sort of rolled out um, after the first sort of initial lockdown because um, we we were thinking about a way to release a record it was almost like I've heard so many people in the same sort of situation as Rao where they basically put out their art or their music or their writing or whatever it might be um, at the start of the pandemic and we were hearing across the board from from different bands that you know how difficult it was to have dropped a record and have none of the usual things that went alongside that you know like like Ra was saying like that you know being able to be out there and promote the record yourselves and 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 just even even just down to like figuring out how your fan base has perceived your record you know it's such a different thing when you put the record out and then you go on tour and you get that sense of feeling and you get to celebrate the work that you've put in um 
so I, we were hearing that across the board anyway, but we had an idea to roll out um, a Patreon campaign. We called it the Sleep Society. Um, and, it, you know, it's nothing crazy new. It's, a, it's basically a glorified fan base. But, it, it, you know, as Patreon does, it gives anyone who cares about what, what you're doing more. You know what I mean? And so we had that idea. Basically, we were talking about it on the tour in America before COVID hit. So as, as COVID was getting more serious, we were all working, um, working during the lockdown, but to make this thing happen. So on, on, honestly, I feel very, very lucky that we had that to put our energy into. Um, it was so positive for us to be able to work on something and create something that would still have a, a positive effect on our fan base, but through a lockdown. So it was crazy how these things f fell into place for us. Um, and I've forgotten the initial question, but I did have a plan <laughs> for that to roll into where that was going. But being back on tour, like, yeah. how, how, um, how was it? Yeah, so I just wanted to reiterate like how yeah. difficult that was for other yeah. our peers and other bands to not have that that touring thing. So then after we rolled out Sleep Society, it was really good for us because we were able to get a sense of of how almost how that rollout would be like if we were on tour, but through but through a Patreon. So that was really lucky. But um, yeah, just what what it made me do anyway is is never take being able to move freely around our country let alone into europe and stuff um like it, it made me never want to take that for granted again like and it made me feel like i'd wasted so much time previously so it just made it made me it, you know it, it was kind of a strange feeling to be like right we're going away and it, like it kind of flipped from being away all the time to being home all the time then back away it was like i say a lot of mixed emotion but like just yeah you kind of got it, it was weird to sort of think of and what is touring going to be like now but like we were lucky to have that to work on but yeah it was very sort of it, it was you know very unsettling to be like right we're heading back out now after after all this time yeah and I feel like um you know being with your family and friends and loved ones for for such a like large proportion of time and all of a sudden then being back on the road again that, that must have been really tricky as well yeah and and quite hard i think for your, your families and the people that you have back home because they you know to a degree they're like oh great I've got I've got my people back for a while and then and then as soon as they get kind of you like you start getting used to it it's kind of like right there you go again so it's not it's, you know it's difficult for everyone in that situation like touring's difficult anyway but adding all the adding a pandemic into the mix and and things changing and and different like different rules and things that went along with it yeah it's quite difficult for everyone around us yeah and lucy like you said that you you had this this job at center parks and then all of a sudden obviously the music industry doors open were you like was there so much work that you couldn't handle it because i know that a lot of people have said it was like feast or famine all of a sudden it was like work 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 and and that must have been really overwhelming as well um honestly that's exactly what it was like yeah it was uh as soon as the covid rules lifted obviously we left the, the center park building job and it was like the floodgates opened um we couldn't get a staff we were short of we're short of staff we were short of equipment and because of covid we can't buy equipment because there's a shortage of the manufacturing um involved so not only did we have this absolutely monstrous amount of work which I, I honestly i don't know how we got through it <laughs> um, so we had this monstrous amount of work and then sure everything um and everyone was like it so i spoke to other people that own production companies we were all having the same problem um mm. because there's two years of touring that everybody wanted to start as soon as we possibly could, which was amazing. But after a few months of it, we were exhausted and it got to the end of the year. And I remember looking at um, George, my husband, who's also my business partner. And I'm like, I don't know if we can continue with this. Like, I don't, it, we were so, it was like so many mixed emotions. We were so grateful that we could do our job again and we had the buzz off it but I felt um 
I don't I, d I don't know the word to describe it I suppose the guilt almost that why, why am I feeling now sad and now I'm feeling I can't do this even though we've been not allowed to do it for so long it was uh, it was a really really difficult time actually yeah yeah and did um was there any more kind of mental health support that was integrated um within within either your company or actually just generally on tour and, and this can be to everybody but you know there's a lot of talk about when we go back on tour we're going to that we're going to be more supportive of people's mental health we're going to notice when when addictions are flaring up did that happen or was that just was that just something that people said um honestly from my experience we we were definitely there for each other a lot more um definitely trying to look after each other because obviously we, we had this mountain of work and we were all so tired so we were constantly picking each other up and you know trying to encourage each other like yeah we, yeah we can do this we can get through this and there was definitely um it definitely brought us more together as a team which was really nice mm, yeah how about you Rao? what what was your feelings being back again and on the road and no sleep and all those kind of things that you weren't used to that you kind of caught up on during yeah lockdown. <laughs> yeah well I suppose it was like a it was a whole sense of you you become familiar with a completely new lifestyle uh and then you get you know catapulted back out onto the road again and it's unfamiliar and you, you know humans don't deal with sudden change very well at all really um I think we were quite lucky in the fact that we, it was a very gradual um, kind of thing. Like we we we, Dutch, we did the first um, UK festival, um, which was the the download pilot, yeah. and that was just like complete euphoria. So it was just like whoa, you know, like just <laughs> agreed. Just, yeah, just com <laughs> this is what we've been missing. Oh my god, this is the best. Um, but then you know, then we had a. a a load another sort of four or five months after that with nothing so it was just like Gah! just a little glimpse of like <laughs> normality and like not just normality just com yeah just yeah madness but um yeah I don't know it was uh, it was a weird it's it, it's just that that similar thing that kind of real mm, tangled sort of mesh of emotions constantly I think mm -hmm. um like we just we just did six weeks in America, and that was that's probably been the hardest tour so far. It's it's really the only one that's been above like three weeks. So it's that's when you really notice the you know whatever mental health problems uh, you're sort of struggling with with will come to a head then because of the sleep deprivation and because of the being away from you know all the the home comforts that you've you've got somewhat used to. Um, so yeah, it's it's been been weird been been difficult but um yeah as you say I think everyone is a, a little bit more wary of everyone else and sort of maybe has everyone else's back a bit um I think with yeah yeah like, that's a general kind of progress thing anyway I suppose but yeah 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 I, I feel I feel that I think that be because of that time we had away from it from everything I think when we come back to it, everyone is more sort of like, like Rao says, aware of how other people might be feeling. And I, I do genuinely think over the last, like over the last few years, anyway, like in my experience, being able to come forward more and openly talk about any issues that you might, or how or feelings that you might have, it's become a lot more sort of normal to be able to openly speak about that. Uh, like, I don't feel like a few years back it was as easy to just be like, you know, I, I, can we have a quick chat? I just wanted to bounce some things off you even, you know, like you just kind of like you plod along and sort of sort of just try and get through things, you know. But I, I definitely think from going from touring to not touring for so long and then going back out, I think people are more tuned into the fact that, you know, making sure people around you are feeling okay and making sure everyone's doing all right and, and being just being more open to listen, I guess. 
Yeah, nice. And do you have any like any professionals on tour that you can speak to or anyone can speak to when they're struggling? Or is it just a case of, you know, you like you speak to your bandmates or is there is there someone that you can go to? Because you said that, you you know, people are more open. Who are you yeah. open with? Um, for me personally, just more open with with our, the band and crew that we have yeah. working with us. We, we don't necessarily have any professionals out there that we can just go you know, to the production office and speak to or anything like that. But I, I think the general, like, you know, togetherness is there more now and people are just more aware of, of, of people's feelings and what and maybe maybe as well what what sort of moods and, and senses you get from people when they are feeling a certain way, even if that they might not know it themselves. Like, for me anyway, I, I know to be more in tune and, and just look out for people a little bit more, you know, like, um, yeah, not be so selfish, I guess yeah <laughs> nice okay cool and like are there any differences I know you've talked about that people are more aware of mental health issues and things on tour now but are there any other differences from being on tour now uh as opposed to pre-covid and that's well, the, thing again. The, the first thing like for for a while even after we come we came back and we started touring a fair bit they still didn't feel uh just a hundred percent you know like so for instance the first few tours we didn't go into the audience at all you know it was, it was still covid was still a yeah. thing then as apparently it's not anymore um so it was there was that sense of real human connection like physical connection still wasn't like there you felt sort of like you were holding yourself back a bit so that was that was only the real major difference and that stopped now um and so, so that that was like being, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the right analogy to use. It's like, you know, only eating like half the chocolate bar and just being like someone taking it away from you. And you haven't said goodbye to it yet. Um, yeah. It was, so that was that was weird. But yeah, other than that, it's just the difficulties are all based around finances, really, at the moment, just that's the the one difference that everything has hiked up in in prices so it's incredibly difficult um to put on the same level of show um that we were all putting on before um but yeah other than that i, I haven't seen i haven't sort of noticed any any major differences i know there's a lot there's a lot of tours still being sort of like spoken about and even announced at the moment where where covid is still a very high priority on making sure everybody's safe and it sounds kind of weird because we've done so many shows now where it's you know you still have to sort of work around it but it doesn't seem that predominant but yeah I, I know of tours being booked now where it's like the the first thing that you will talk about before booking a tour is, is sort of bubbling together and if people are vaccinated and and those sort of things so it's still there's still a lot of people within our industry, I would say, that are very divided in a sense in terms of, you know, whether people were, were up for getting vaccinated, whether they weren't, how, what are the extents they're willing to go to to make sure other bands and other crew are safe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, for example, if you, you've got a band over here that, that have just totally decided not to be vaccinated and stuff, that's going to affect their touring schedules because bands... Or, or vice versa, you know what I mean? There, there might be loads of bands that are, that, that aren't vaccinated, that aren't, aren't able to tour with, with a band that are all vaccinated because they want to they want to look after their people, and rightfully so. But it can it, it's still it's still very much going on out there, and it's still making it you know it's still making it difficult enough to navigate around. So yeah, it's still tricky at times. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Lucy? Like, how are you all? How are your days now? Um, we were speaking to somebody recently and they said now that they've been back with their crew they're back on the road they're doing 27 hour days again so there there's really no difference from you know pre-covid how's how's that for you um so we try not to do the 27 hour days um after last year was so crazy for us we were just like we can't continue as we are doing so whereas before we would say yes to every job and be like, yeah, of course we'll, we'll do it. We, we have started to say no and 
like maintain a healthy manageable workload rather than like basically absolutely killing ourselves and you know because I also felt we weren't able to give the same attention to detail to all the jobs whereas if we take less you know we can give our full attention yeah yeah cool thank you so now just around your I guess the best moments and the worst moments of being on tour and it doesn't have to be anything to do with Covid but if you're happy to share your worst moment and your best moment of touring, touring life? Um, so the worst moment for me is um, being away from my husband <laughs> Um, because he he's a sound engineer I'm a lighting engineer and we tour together um, but the the while she sleeps tour I've just done um, I didn't have him the first week and I found it incredibly difficult um, I didn't speak to anyone about it um, I felt very lonely I felt very um, just aware like in my own brain um, just yeah just not I found it really hard. It yeah, just not not in a good place. Um, so that, but I soon you know he 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 flew out and we had a good like he picked me up and I uh, got to know the band a lot more and the crew a lot more. And then after that, I was I was buzzing. I was like ready to go again. Yeah. So I just got myself in a bit of a bad headspace with it, a bit of a hole. Um, which I managed to figure out and, you know, wiggle my way out of. But the good side of it is the, uh, it's, it's like the adrenaline. It's the buzz. It's the seeing the thousands of fans queuing up outside and these awesome bands and being a part of that and being able to put these awesome shows on it's really cool <laughs> and some days I feel like I have the best job in the world <laughs> yeah. that's the thing isn't it you know people say you know, working in the music in industry especially it's the highs and lows and I think that's why people get into um, the throes of addiction and and, and mental mental health challenges because you're going from one extreme to the other in such a short space of time and it's knowing how to handle that like how do you how do you, as an artist, go on stage and play out to like thousands and thousands of people and then come off and be on your own in your ho hotel room? Like, how do you how do you manage those extremes? Yeah, I was talking to um, one of my friends the other day about this and I was I think it was after the Parkway Drive um, tour. It's like I've just done an arena with 15,000 people, however many thousand people in there. And literally the next day. I'm in my local Tesco buying some tea bags and a, a thing of milk. <laughs> it's just like the, um, I don't know, the contrast between the two is insane. And uh, yeah, after we've been on a tour, you do come home and you do get depressed because you haven't got the buzz and you haven't got the adrenaline and it's, it's almost like a come down. <laughs> yeah. It's how I describe it. I know a lot of people experience the same thing. Yeah, I think for me for so long that that was that was just the thing. I just abused alcohol so much, sort of dealing with the high to low, and almost like in a, in a really sort of crappy way. It almost felt like if I wasn't behaving in a certain way, I was doing like rock and roll a disservice or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, it was like I've got the opportunity here to just get wrecked all the time, and that just that I was doing that for so many years and not realizing how much it was having an impact on me because I was just so numb to everything. You know, I'd get home from a tour, I wouldn't even go home. I'd take my suitcases to my local and literally sit there and sometimes sit there for three days, like seriously. And it, it's like, it wasn't good at all. And then that would turn into like, you know, and then that, that naturally turned into a habit. So if, if, you, if you do that straight off a tour, you have a couple of days at home again and you, you, you want to go back out there and just, just booze again and stuff. And I was also as well, like, if your band gets picked up and you're doing well at a young age, like, you're managing yourself in a way on the road. Like, there's no one being like, come on, dude, like, chill it out. You're just like, this is great. Do you know what I mean? i got a fridge full of beer for when I get off stage. And, and, and after that, like, I can do what I like sort of thing. 
so I got into a really, really bad way. And it was only sort of a, a few, like a few years ago now that something happened that really, really, where I really had to change my perspective and change the way I viewed, you know, touring and, and my body. And after sort of having multiple throat surgeries and abusing myself and like doing crazy, crazy things that you just, you know, just were unnecessary. Um, and then having to, you know, having all these things come to, come into play, like I, I realized through not drinking that um, I have a bit of imposter syndrome where like, I don't feel like I, I deserve, like something, not that I don't think I deserve it, but like something sort of tells me that I don't deserve to be in the position that I'm in, even though I've been doing this since I was 16 and I've been passionate about it all my life and, and have put loads of effort in, still something else was telling me that. And then, yeah, so sort of that might have gone hand in hand with alcohol abuse. I don't know. And then other things coming into play, like I, I started realizing that I do actually have some sort of social anxiety that I didn't even ever recognize was a thing. When I was sort of 17 years old and I started going out to my local rock nights, I would get almost hit up, but I just sort of put that down to like a buzz of excitement that I needed to get down to my local and get ready to listen to sort of at the drive in and jump around like an idiot. So I'd just bomb down there on a, on a weekday night, start slamming pints. And I think it all kind of stemmed from that. And then without having uh, booze in my life, I started realizing, I think I have some sort of social anxiety to a degree. And then that's, so having sort of the time away from touring during the lockdown and stuff, although it was very stressful at times, has also helped me to pull back and then take smaller steps forward to realizing what made up that, what, what gave me that sort of urge to be a certain way. Um, and, and now it, it allows me, now that I'm sober, it allows me to appreciate touring so much more, like actually go and see some of the world, remember what I'm seeing, do you know what I mean? Um, so that's really interesting. And then to go alongside of that during the lockdown, I'd never really been into like exercise, like uh, uh, as Enter Shikari is, it's very similar with While She Sleeps, we're both very energetic bands and that is, that is our sense of relief, that is our release. We get to sort of shake off any negative feelings and emotions. And after a live show for me, I feel a lot better. But for some reason, I never, I never took that off of the stage. It was almost like boozing and partying and being on stage and then sweating it out. And it would be the same repetitive thing every day. But I started getting into like more exercise and, and, and running a load. And it's absolutely insane. I can't speak highly enough of how much like, not even like just the gym, just running. It like, it almost like gets rid of my brain fog and like makes me think more clearly and, and literally change, changes my mental health. It's like, yeah, it, it's crazy how much it's done for me. And it's taken me, you know, how many years to get to realize that. But yeah, it seems so simple. But if you're not in the routines of, of trying to live a little bit more healthy or putting gaps between your party and, and then experiencing a bit of, bit more of a sober time, then you can't really put anything into perspective for yourself because it's all clouded in this other stuff. So it's been, it's been crazy good for me to just pull back on all those things and like start working out a bit more and getting a clearer head on things and just, yeah, trying to enjoy touring a lot more with, with that, with, with that side of things in, in play. Yeah, that, that's so good. Cause like you say, you know, it's that vicious cycle, isn't it? You have a drink, drugs, whatever else, then you want to come down and then all you want to do is, have some more drugs, have some more booze, get yourself back on stage, it's a bit of Dutch courage and it goes on and on and on and on. That's that it, was exactly my thing, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. just just I was just in a vicious cycle of being like, right. I, I never drank before a show, so I had like that level of discipline. <laughs> <laughs> like I still want to deliver a decent show, but then it was just the same every day. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been really good for me to come away from all that and, and get some clarity and and sort of yeah, learn about myself a bit more if you like and try and put things put things in the right places and, and work things out. But yeah, things that I never realised were an issue have, have come into play without the booze and drugs and stuff. And I've been able to address them and be positive about making decent changes rather than clouded in, in all that. So yeah. Thank you. Um, how about you, Rao? Any like best and worst moments? Um um well i mean just i guess continuing on from what you were saying just then Loz, like the the exercise thing i cannot 
uh, agree with you more. Like to the point that as well, like quite recently, we've as a band, we've sort of discovered the benefits of like doing exercise together. Like, you know, I think to some extent we've we've all done exercise separately. Not not we you know, none of us have like a strict routine or anything, but like on our recent American tour, like almost I'd say every other day we went on a, a run, just like 5K, um, and me, Chris and Rory. And that's something we've never done. And that not only is good for the sort of one's personal mental health and everything that Loz just said, like defogging the brain, like it just helps focus. It helps you feel energized, helps you feel confident. But, but also like, doing something with the other guys in the band it sort of cements you as a unit I mean it probably goes all the way back to like you know hunter gatherer days like we used to have to hunt for our food and everything else we did everything together you know small communities is how we uh, became successful as a species and why we're here today so like just you know <laughs> doing some little small like, little knock back to that sort of that kind of vibe and that action I think is um it's just been massively beneficial. Um, best and worst things. Uh, worst is probably just missing out on stuff. Um, you know, when you're touring all the time, you miss out on countless like birthdays, weddings, all of this. I mean, Chris and, and Rory in, in, in our band now have kids. So like, you know, it was only, was it last year that, that Rory missed one of his daughter's birthdays? and that's difficult for the mental health like I can only imagine how horrible that must be like being away from your your own spawn <laughs> it must be uh, horrible um but yeah and then I, I I suppose well just a bit more on that like you then it's not just like a FOMO it's like you do then feel like you're not as connected to your you know some of your friends that aren't in the band some of your other friendship groups and you do sort of just it kind of makes you feel like you don't belong so much in in those worlds in your home worlds um so every time you come back from tour you're like you almost there's a part of you that doesn't want to rekindle or like you know do your best to go out of your way to like meet everyone because you're like well i've sort of do they even want to meet me anymore you know <laughs> it's weird thoughts just start coming in so that's definitely like the the worst thing i'd say um best thing is just the you know, probably one of the phrases that we will all say the most in this interview, the human connection side of it is yeah. it's not just the, the feeling of um, knowing that you're like entertaining people. It's so much deeper than that. It's like knowing that you're soothing people, knowing that you're motivating people, inspiring people, connecting with people, like all those things are just like, just priceless and they really like affect you quite, quite deeply um yeah that, that that that's something that I will uh, well I certainly miss the most when you know during the the COVID times um and it, it's something that just it just makes touring um in in, in many cases bearable because <laughs> touring can be very difficult and with the sleep deprivation and everything else on top like it's only those moments in shows where you feel like truly connected to the rest of your your artists, your bands, to the rest of the audience, like those are the moments you're just like, ah, oh, okay, that's yeah. that's why we do this. Yeah. Yeah, and so much, so much goes into the that whole, it, like, for the people going to the the show on the night, it's like their 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 big moment to go and check check out your band. But it's like you're talking years or months of like huge preparations to make to make tours happen. So when you finally get out there and, and, and feel that, that feeling, it's, it's, it's literally unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and like, like the Rao said earlier about the, the sort of download pilot, that first show back was just like all of our band were like a couple of like, well, not, not everyone, but a, a few of a few people, like I was ready to cry before I even went on stage because it, it just hearing that roar, like from the crowd and just being like, we're back to some degree of, of festivals here it was like it was amazing um so that that's the big moment for me where that hit where I was like wow this is it's crazy that we get to do this for a living and people like people like our our sounds and our voices and our lighting shows and, and all of that enough to 
you know, spend their hard earned cash and, and like they're there to support us and they love it as much as we do. It's, it's crazy to have. And like through all that time and uncertainty, those are the moments where you're just like, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, God, and connecting all those people together, coming to see you. Um, yeah. Download, oh, Download is one of the best festivals. I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Oh. Um, what about how, how do you guys look after yourselves on tour? I'm talking like, you know, you've talked about going for runs, but what about mentally? Um, and Rao, I know that, that you do your, your mindfulness, but is there anything else that you do? Like, obviously, Loz, you said that, that you, you know, you talk to your mates, but is there, is there anything, any other kind of well-being things that you do? And you might not do anything, but just for people watching. Um, I think for me, taking those things that I do at home for mindfulness and wellfulness onto the road gives gives me that connection to what almost a bit more of what I'm used to. So like I might go for a run around my local area and then if I keep that up on, on the road, it's kind of like that thing that you're constantly doing no matter where you are. So that that's and it, like, yeah, there's not much else that I do. If I'm feeling a certain way, I might call home and have talks with friends and stuff like that. But like in terms of like keeping a balance, I just do the things that I've found to really help me at home, but do those while I'm out on the road. And that seems to like really help level me out. Yeah. Do you do anything, Lucy? I know that you, you've got your, your hubby on the road with you. Um, but is there anything, any kind of like mindfulness or anything that you do that helps you? Um, the main thing is is communicating yeah it's it's taught it, well learning to talk to people I'm still learning now and then, you know I'm still it's still hard um but I found that is the best thing you know if you wake up one day and you're feeling you're feeling down just talk to someone be like not having a very good day today you know feeling a bit a bit rough or whatever and yeah just talk it through because you can I think after five minutes, you seem to feel 10 times better because you automatically don't feel like you're alone. Yeah, we, we were talking about that um, the other day in this interview we were all doing where it's like, it's actually quite hard to find those times to talk to each other on tour because it's such a roller coaster. You know, there's always something happening. It's just action packed um, and like finding like a quiet moment and perhaps you know a quiet private moment with one other person or with two other people or whatever is actually really difficult so like we've been we've sort of criti criticized ourselves ourselves as band members that, that we haven't like opened up enough to each other often and i think part of that is just being born in britain at the time we were born in where our parents have had that sort of victoria victorian stiff upper lip you know battle axe sort of mindset where one shouldn't show one's emotions and everything um certainly not talk about them and uh it's, it's i think that we all know that it's it's well it's a sort of stereotype that it's harder for, for guys to to open up um but also i think it's it's just not finding the right situation and the right you know a sort of having an em an empathic quiet uh thoughtful conversation that's quite hard to do on tour um but of course that doesn't mean that it's impossible you just have to actually make time for it you have to like what one of the things uh, we did on the, on the american tour was like every now and then we'd like treat ourselves to actually like going out for some food uh, as opposed to just eating rider sandwiches um and we'd actually just sit down and just like ask each other how we're doing and you're not allowed to just go like, yeah, good. How are you? You know, it's it's not small talk. You have to like say something about like what you've been feeling that day or recently or whatever else. Um, so there are certainly ways you can you can get around the uh, the roller coaster that is touring. Yeah, that's so good. And I think, like you say, it's so important that men especially talk because you know suicide rates in 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 men are, are through the roof, especially over forty actually. So. If we can get men to keep talking and, and know that it's okay and there's nothing shameful about it, it's it's so important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and then my last question to all of you is, if someone was watching this and they were really struggling uh, mentally, what one piece of advice would you give to them? 
Um, and it might be something that you you've you've read a family members told you or, or something that just came up for you I know Loz you said something happened and you were like right now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop drinking now I'm gonna you know just concentrate on getting feeling better so yeah, yeah is there anything that you any advice that you would give um it's a tricky one because you know I don't feel qualified in any way to 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 tell anybody but I think that and you know again I don't know how to sound but I think that no matter how much help is out there for you it actually starts with you wanting to be helped I don't I don't think it might you know hundreds of people could tell you you should you, you need to seek help or this and that and it's how importantly you take their advice as to whether that is going to sway you to do something but I think if you're feeling a certain way quite a lot and and it's apparent to yourself that that you know you might need help it starts with you um you have to be actively sort of seeking it um and i know that's difficult for people but like don't i, I don't think you should try and be brave with it i think if you need help just be outspoken about it and just get the ball rolling because it's it's so much easier once you have so yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, don't try and don't try and fight it on your own. You know that that's why that's why music supports there. You know that's why all your friends are your friends and they care about you. So yeah, I think you know, open up, you know, take the first step yourself, and then you'll probably find out. Like as we, as we all are at the moment, like you're not on your own and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's not as scary, is it? Once you've done it, it, it it's nowhere near as scary as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. How about you, Lucy? Any any advice that you'd give? Um, I think it's important to have perspective. Mm. I think sometimes, I know for me, I can get caught up on really small, in, insignificant things and I get worked up about and it's normally someone else going, it's not that bad. <laughs> Never as bad as it is in, in your own mind. So I think that, that's why it's good to, like Loz says, take a step forward and you have to step out of your comfort zone with it and talk to people and, yeah, just yeah, just ha just learn to have some perspective and learn to take a step back and look at the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Any, any advice that you'd give, Raoul? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean... But I think perspective is so important, like especially when you think about the world that we're living in now, it's actually, if you're not suffering from any kind of mental health problem, you're incredibly lucky, really. Like, I, I think that the system that we've employed for the last sort of 40 years and, you know, we, no one wants to speak about politics, but neoliberalism or neoliberal capitalism or just capitalism, whatever you want to call it, free market economy, it is a ruthless system um it, it really does incubate mental health problems it produces and incubates them um so it sh it should be expected really that you that you'll go through some struggles or and, and that everyone will go through struggles um you know we're not really at, like as a species we're not suited to this like we're not suited to this rampant self-interest and just putting profit above everything else putting profit above human connection above our planet you know we, we we grew up we evolved as a species that was connected in small groups uh connected to each other connected to the environment um and at the moment we do everything to exploit each other and exploit the environment so it's like it's a completely backward um way of living and therefore what we're wired for, you know, our, our literal genes are wired to live one way and we're being forced into living another way. So I, I guess what I'm saying is like, it should be expected that, that you're struggling. So there's, there's absolutely zero shame in it. There's, there's zero really surprise in it. Um, we should just all be talking to each other constantly. And like, how are you dealing with this fucking shit show that we're all like having to deal with? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just, trying to be constantly open and knowing that everyone else is probably going through something just as difficult as you or is about to or has been you know so there's there's, there's always a conversation to have 
Absolutely. And it's that stat, isn't it? One in four people in every year have some kind of mental health challenge. It's one in four. 64% of people know someone with an addiction. So I think it's about time we normalise the fact that mental health challenges exist and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. And the sooner you get help or the sooner you get a diagnosis, the better. So, yeah. Listen, thank you guys so much. I'm, I massively appreciate it. Um, I know that you're all super hectic and you're all about to go on tour again. So I wish you every success with that. And I really do hope that you have some kind of like holiday or something after all of it, because um, you deserve it. Um, What's a holiday? <laughs> What's a holiday? Yeah, a beach and sea maybe. Um, <laughs> I just got back from Gran Canaria and me, I'm all right. Oh, oh nice. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Lucky, I stuck I stuck one in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, tell us. Um yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. And this is gonna really help a lot of people and resonate with a lot of people, so thank you. Um,